In this short movie, I'm going to take a look at how to produce a very simple terrain model inside ArchiCAD. The first thing I'll look at is the story below the ground floor, and on here I've placed a copy of the 2D information that shows the survey the area of the site model to be produced around the building. Next thing I'm going to do is look at the ground floor plan, and you can see the building's already in place here. In 3D we have a very simple model, but nothing at all surrounding it. Back in 2D, I'll take a look at the area where the terrain is going to be. And in order to produce this, what I'm going to have to do is use what's called Trace and Reference. So I'm going to switch Trace and Reference on, and by default it's already showing this story. But what I can actually do is right-click on any of the views and say show that as a Trace Reference. This shows me the overall site boundary, and it shows some contours, and it also shows a flat area for where the building's going to sit. I'll take a look at mesh settings to make sure they're set up properly. In this case, the mesh is 5 metres deep to ensure that it extends below the lowest point on the terrain. And I'm also going to set this level to minus 100. This means there'll be a 100 mil gap between the finished floor level of the ground floor and the start of the, the plateaued area of the terrain. I'll scroll through the settings here. I don't want to see a cover fill. Uh, the ridge is already set for smooth, which means we'll get a more natural appearance. And that's it pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm just going to use the rectangular drawing method to just trace round the overall boundary of the site. Now when I look at 3D, you can see the building is now sitting on a large green slab. The next step that we're going to do is create the contours on the mesh. But before I do that, I have to just check the magic wand settings to ensure that these are set for deviations from curves. If I use any of these other options, chances are Far too many points will be created and we end up with a very cumbersome large mesh to deal with. To actually create the contours, what I've got to do is make sure geometry method is set for polygon, make sure the mesh is selected and that the mesh tool is active in the toolbox. And then we simply magic wand, which because I don't have the toolbar visible for magic wand, we're going to use the space bar. Space bar, click on the first contour and a little dialog appears. And I want to add new points, make sure it fits the user ridges so I can adjust the contours, hit OK, and that's that one finished. And then repeat, spacebar magic wand, click. OK, and the next one, and the next one, and the last one. There's one final one that goes around this plateaued area. So again, magic wand, click on here. OK, the dialogue, and I'm almost finished. The final thing I'm going to do is zoom in, and I'm going to cut... I'll draw another rectangle around the building. And this time I want to create a hole so that the building physically sits inside the space. When I now look at 3D again, you'll see it looks almost exactly the same as before, but if I was to highlight the mesh, you'll see that in fact these contours are now present. And what I could actually do is pick any one of these points up and then just change its height. And you'll see as I start to do this, play around with the settings, the ground actually starts to change and form the new profile. However, what I'm going to do is return to the 2D window. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is turn on the Trace and Reference palette. Because within here, what I can actually do is change the options of the reference so that the text and the dimensions are visible. First of all, I'll turn on text. And if I also turn on dimensions, level dimensions in this case, I can see the heights of the various contours within the site. You'll also see, because I've changed some of the points on the contours of the, the mesh that's in place, all these extra lines appear where ArchiCAD's trying to interpolate what's going on between the points at various heights. But the next task is pretty simple. I'm on the mesh tool already, select the mesh, and effectively zoom in on the side here, grab any one of these points within the contour, and change this height to match what dimensions are given. Four meters, an important thing is apply to all, which sets that entire chain to four meters. This one is two, and minus two. If we pan and zoom a little bit, minus four, and minus three. I'll zoom out and check. This contour remains at zero, so that one's okay. 
The only thing I have to do now is you see there's a couple of spot heights, but I also have to change the corners. So this first corner is 4784. Move this slightly. 4359. 4654. And 3397. Sorry. Minus 3397. And in this case, I'll go back to this because I made a mistake. It should be minus. So just go back, change it to minus, and that fixes that one. When I look at 3D now, because only the mesh is selected, then only the mesh is visible and hopefully you can see that it's now more of a natural looking terrain item rather than a flat green slab. Returning to 2D there are a couple of spot heights and to add these all I have to do is with the mesh tool selected make sure I'm on the polygon and then literally just click where I get this tick mark to create a point. Now this will carry on and produce a contour but I want just one point so I click again and that sets that point in place. What I can then do is pick it up, move this out of the way, and change the dimension to 4505, and enter. Now the cross to the other point, so click once to start, and again to finish, OK. Pick it up, 4214, OK that, and we're now finished. I'll turn the Trace and Reference palette off, so we can see back to what's going on. I'm going to have a look at 3D. You can see the building now sitting quite nicely in the middle of this mesh.